Crime and Crime Again discusses true crime content that may be graphic or disturbing. Listener discretion is advised. This case was brought to my attention when someone connected to the family reached out to me and asked if I could cover this story and hopefully bring more awareness to it. I had never heard of this case, despite it being quite recent. And that is likely because Indigenous women often don't even make their local headlines when their lives are stolen, much less headlines across the country. I immediately looked into this story and right away, I knew that I needed to cover this. There isn't much information out there about this case. It is still considered an open and active investigation, according to agencies involved. There are very few articles written, very few news clips. A huge portion of the information I was able to gather about this case comes from an article written by Dolly A. Butts for the Sioux City Journal and published on April 24th, 2021, called, quote-unquote, Family Still Seeking Justice One Year After Macy Woman's Death. The article is extensive and well-written and offers so much information about this story that I have not been able to find anywhere else. So thank you to the author for your amazing coverage on this case that so desperately needs more awareness. There are a few other sources that I was able to find, but this article definitely stood out among them. I will link that article in the show notes if you'd like to read it. So without any further ado, this is the case of Ashley Aldrich. 29-year-old Ashley Aldrich, by all accounts, was a sweet, caring soul with so much love to give. She was generally a happy person, and she loved her family fiercely. Many describe her as shy, though Ashley's mother, Tilly Aldrich, would lovingly describe her as being a bit of a scrapper, more of a spitfire personality than she may have let on to others. Ashley was the youngest daughter to Galen and Tilly Aldrich. She was artistic and creative. One of her favorite hobbies was drawing. By the time she graduated high school in 2009, Ashley had become interested in cosmetology, and after graduation, she began attending Le James International College to study cosmetology. She successfully earned her diploma from the college in 2010. Ashley was an Omaha tribal member from the Omaha Reservation and a former employee of the tribe at the reservation. The Aldrich family has faced more than one personal battle and tragedy in their lives. In 2011, the family lost everything after a flood. In the same year, Tilly was diagnosed with breast cancer. At some point, Ashley began dating her high school boyfriend again. Their relationship was marked by abuse, perpetrated by the boyfriend. Over the course of their relationship, there were several reported incidents of domestic violence and suspicion of domestic violence. That boyfriend would go on to be the father of Ashley's two boys. In one instance, on June 3, 2017, Tilly visited the apartment where Ashley lived with her boyfriend. There, she found Ashley in the shower, blood soaking her clothes. Tilly found blood spatter on the walls of the apartment, and more blood still on the couch. She wrote about this disturbing experience in an email that she sent to the Omaha Tribal Council on June 9, 2017, just days after the incident. Ashley's boyfriend was charged with domestic disturbance and endangering the welfare of children for this incident on June 3, 2017. However, one month later, those charges were all dismissed. There were four other, separate, documented domestic incidents at the hands of Ashley's boyfriend that were reported during 2013, 2014, and 2016. However, none of the documents from these reports specify whether Ashley was involved in these incidents or whether they involved someone else entirely. In one of those incidents, the boyfriend was found not guilty. And once again, all other charges were dropped in all of the other domestic incidents involving that boyfriend. Around 2018, Ashley began to struggle with alcohol abuse. Her family members noticed drastic and unhealthy weight loss in the midst of her battle. Ashley was a devoted mother to her two sons. She loved every moment she spent with them. In July 2018, her parents took over a lot of the care of her boys, but Ashley was still very much involved. 
It seems that her parents knew that Ashley was having a difficult time and wanted to offer their full support in helping her care for the boys. Ashley's sons were everything to her. In November 2019, Ashley checked into a detox center, where she stayed for four days. She was ready to turn things around. After leaving the detox center, she attempted to get checked in for inpatient treatment, but there were no beds available. The waitlist was so long that Ashley, probably feeling defeated, returned home. After this, things became even more tumultuous for Ashley. Soon after Thanksgiving 2019, Ashley was taken to the hospital with a severe injury to her hand. Her fingers were purple, and one fingernail was falling off. Ashley told Tilly that it was no big deal that her hand had simply been smashed in a car door. For the next month, Ashley spent most of her time at her parents' house, rather than at the home she shared with her boyfriend. On December 26, 2019, around 2.30 a.m., Tilly watched as Ashley came into the living room, putting on her coat, about to head outside to smoke a cigarette. She knew that Ashley was leaving, but she asked her to stay anyways. Ashley left through the back door and got into a vehicle. When Tilly questioned her in the following days, Ashley insisted that she was okay, despite her mother's deep concerns for her safety. Almost two weeks later, on January 6, 2020, Tilly received a message from her other daughter, Alyssa, that worsened her fears for Ashley. Alyssa told her that on January 5th, someone saw Ashley in the passenger seat of her boyfriend's SUV, and it looked like she had been beaten. No one had heard anything from Ashley. On January 7th, 2020, Ashley's father Galen was working around the Omaha reservation when he saw that SUV parked in a cornfield. He approached the vehicle and took a peek inside, but found nothing. When he looked closer at the ground, he noticed footprints, Ashley's and her boyfriend's, but he couldn't determine which direction the tracks were going. Galen then walked to a nearby bridge to investigate further, and that's when Ashley's boyfriend pulled up beside him in a different vehicle, having abandoned his SUV in the cornfield. Galen questioned the boyfriend about Ashley, but the boyfriend was tight-lipped. He claimed that he hadn't seen Ashley since January 5th, explaining that the SUV had gotten stuck in the mud and Ashley had gone to get help, hence why the vehicle was still parked there two days later. The boyfriend claimed that Ashley simply didn't return. Suspicious and afraid for his daughter, Galen immediately went to the Omaha Tribal Police Department to talk to someone about the incident. Meanwhile, Ashley's sister Alyssa had begun her own search. She also stumbled upon the boyfriend's SUV in the cornfield, not long after Galen had left to go to the police department. While Galen was at the police department, he was able to hear dispatch on the radio. A dispatcher was asking for a police response to a screaming woman just south of town, in need of immediate help. Alyssa had investigated the area around the vehicle, just as Galen did. When she didn't find anything, she moved further out from the SUV, heading toward the tree line. Around 3 p.m. on January 7, 2020, Alyssa found the body of her sister, Ashley Aldridge, lying nude and face down in that same cornfield, little more than a hundred yards away from her boyfriend's SUV. The location was less than a mile from the home where Ashley lived with him. Alyssa was the woman who was screaming for help on the dispatch radio. Alyssa noted that Ashley's body was covered in mud, from her back down to her calves. The FBI was present at the scene, though they would not confirm whether or not they were investigating the death. Galen spoke with an FBI agent who told him that there were no signs that Ashley had been sexually assaulted or strangled. The agent also told him that there was no visible bruising on her body. Galen and Tilly were given the chance to view Ashley's body and say goodbye to their daughter, after an autopsy was complete. Immediately, Galen noticed that Ashley had a black eye, a swollen nose, and welts all over her body. He contacted the FBI agent and informed him that he had seen the condition of Ashley's body for himself, but the agent explained it away, claiming that the condition she was in was due to the way she was lying on the ground. The family has adamantly opposed this explanation. On January 10th, 2020, Ashley's boyfriend was charged with criminal homicide, criminal contempt, and duty to give information and render aid. He was held at a detention center in Macy, Nebraska, but he was released months later in April. On the day that Ashley was found, 
her mother, Tilly Aldrich, made a Facebook post. The post includes a picture of the SUV exactly where it was found, and another picture where, in the distance, you can see something on the ground in the field. It's a white covering laid over Ashley's body. Tilly's post, dated January 7, 2020, reads, quote, This is what happens when our law enforcement looks the other way. When law enforcement never does their job. He should have been in prison for the number of times she was assaulted. He was turned in. But bro code always held up stronger. Now they want to be on the ball. He beat my daughter and left her in a field. Dead. My girl was an alcoholic, but she loved her babies. Now they will never see their mama, their Ashley, again. End quote. Ashley's death certificate was filed on January 17, 2020, and it lists her cause of death as, quote, hypothermia complicating acute alcohol toxicity, end quote. The manner of Ashley's death is classified as an accident. Her exact time of death was not determined, but it is estimated that she died sometime on January 5, 2020, the same day that a witness reported seeing her in the passenger seat of her boyfriend's SUV, appearing to have been beaten. Now, over a year after Ashley's death, no charges have been brought in her case. No arrests have been made, and her family still has no explanation as to what happened to their loved one. Ashley's funeral was held on January 11, 2020. In the weeks after Ashley's funeral, her niece, Donette, who is a Winnebago tribal member, became determined to bring awareness to not only Ashley's story, but the stories of all indigenous women who were abused, murdered, forgotten, and silenced. Donette was a cheerleader at Walt Hill High School, and she came up with a perfect opportunity to honor Ashley's memory and tell her story. She planned a brief memorial for the upcoming home basketball game that she would be cheering at with the rest of her squad. She spoke to the school superintendent about her idea, and he approved it. But the day before the basketball game, he abruptly changed his mind. Donette was not about to let that stop her. She knew that Ashley's story deserved to be told. That the voices of indigenous women should not and would not be silenced. She and her cheerleading team stuck to their idea. On the evening of January 28, 2020, three weeks after Ashley was found, Donette and the rest of her cheer squad walked onto the court during Donette's very last home basketball game of her high school career, carrying pictures of Ashley and proudly wearing painted red handprints over their mouths, the symbol of the missing and murdered Indigenous women movement. At some point in the evening, the girls moved to the middle of the floor and held up pictures of Ashley. The moment was intense and powerful. The girls cried and grieved and their coach asked that they move off the court to wash their faces. Initially, it seemed that their coach simply cared about them and wanted them to have their moment in private. But as it turns out, he was on the side of the superintendent, who had decided the day before that their idea was not appropriate. The very next day, their high school canceled the rest of their cheer season. Donette would not be allowed to cheer at any more games during her last year of high school. The school claimed to have canceled the remainder of the season due to a contract violation, explaining that the girls had brought food and drinks onto the floor and mentioning cheering during timeouts. Donette says that all of that is completely false, stating that there was no contractual agreement for the cheer squad to break in the first place. She explained that only one girl on the squad signed an agreement and turned it in. The rest of them did not. It's quite clear that the superintendent, the school, and the girls' coach were making a concerted effort to silence the voices of indigenous people, once again, and scrambling to come up with any absurd explanation that might save them from scrutiny. Ashley's family is still fighting for answers and fighting for justice, and their fight is going unnoticed and unheard. Ashley's story deserves to be told. The stories of indigenous people deserve to be told, need to be told. No more silence, No more complicity. No more stolen sisters. If you enjoy the show, please do consider leaving a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts as it really, really helps out with the visibility of the show. If you don't listen on Apple Podcasts, but you would still like to leave a review, you can do that on Podchaser by searching Crime and Crime Again. I will also link it in the show notes. If you'd like to show monetary support for the show, you can do so on Buy Me a Coffee where you can make a one-time donation less than the price of one cup of coffee. I will also leave that link in the show notes. 
You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Crime Again Pod, Instagram at Crime Again Podcast, on Facebook, Crime and Crime Again Podcast, and on TikTok at Crime Again Podcast. There is also a Facebook discussion group, which I will link in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode of Crime and Crime Again. Thank you.